six after I graduated my first degree in University of Indonesia. Uh, it took some time for me to actually uh, start to focus on tiger because tiger is a very specific uh, special animal. Yeah? Even ecologists, uh, I think, should not go directly to, to try to study tiger before you study this anything else, something else. Because tiger is like on the top of the uh, ecosystem there. Uh, with a lot of uh, other components to be able to, to thrive. So uh, after I studied bird, after I studied forest fire, after I studied vegetation, then I started to study tiger. And uh, it was started in 2004. And this was the, the bike that I used to use a lot uh, when I did uh, uh, my field work. So I have the privilege to uh, visit a lot of uh, remote areas that uh, only a few people probably have the chance of. So these are uh, my two team in remote Bali. We setting up camera traps. We use uh, quite a bit of technology also. We use a GPS collar to monitor the, uh, the Wi-Fi. We use a camera trap because uh, animals are not easily uh, directly observed. So technology really is uh, something that uh, are really useful to be used to uh, study animals. And this is my picture when I was younger. <laughs> uh, try to notice the, the, the tree behind me over there and see what happened next. Just in the next uh, few days after this, we set up this camera. Tiger came. So this was uh, one of the first tigers that we, that we got uh, in 2004 uh, in this area. We got a couple others in this area. Unfortunately, I know exactly this place. No one is already. The forest is no longer there. It's replaced by palm oil. And uh, camera trap allows me to analyze the data very nicely because it has so many other uh, information, not just, not just the image itself. You can attach the uh, geographical information, you can attach the timestamp, and now, like being here, I saw that the technology keep on developing and uh, the sensors that we have now, uh, like uh, for example, the the fact that you can actually move around, I'm thinking that it should be the camera trap in the future. So that you can actually not just, just get the picture, but you can actually also tell whether the animal is uh, healthy or not. Or maybe even like whether the animal are happy or not. Should be able, why not? And you can tell the movement of the animals and you can understand uh, the, the, the wildlife and the ecosystem even better. So a uh, very interesting thing about tiger that I learned is that uh, Tiger requires a very large space. We're talking about like uh, the area of Singapore. Probably can only accommodate this is about half size of Limambali. I mean Limambali Reserve. So probably only ten tiger. Can you can believe it? How many human actually lives here? But human again, we, we took resources from other places. But tigers, they, they, they actually sustain their uh, the resource from that particular area. And tigers, just like us, they also see themselves as the, the most dominant animals in the world. We think that we are the one, right? Tigers, being the top predator, will, will see themselves. And a lot more that, that, that I learned. But uh, sadly, as I mentioned earlier, the, the place that I used to place the camera is already gone. And that happened again and again and again. So many places that I visited, we don't, can no longer put camera traps, we can no longer uh, do research because it is already converted. And again, like uh, this all to do with the demand just that are happening within the landscape, or not just within the country, but also driven by uh, the demand from across the world. For example, oil palm is exported to, you name it, India, China, US, Europe, and all of us consume, including myself. And you know the, the, the process in, in opening a plant for oil palm, oftentimes the issues will be to burn it. And you know the consequence as a Singaporean, myself also lives in Uganda. Two years ago, I mean if you remember that, it's, uh, it's really a disaster for all of us. And uh, what happened is that, uh, this is exactly like what this has been depicted here, very nicely, how uh, uh, the forest has gone totally. That is so real, and, and I saw it myself. And this is not the place that is uh, supposed to be open. This is a protected area. The, the 
feature here that we took yesterday. We took this during we were conducting our own survey. This is inside the national park. So many of these have already gone far beyond the boundary. But uh, the story is not all great. So we, we have quite big areas, uh, like Sumatra itself actually is the it's quite a sizable island, it's about uh, the size of California. So Rio province is uh, one of the biggest provinces. So the, the, most of the uh, units for Rio has been like the Boris Vision and so on. But uh, the fact is that there are still actually few areas left, like Rimbamba uh, that are still relatively uh, intact until now. And uh, just to illustrate uh, how close it is, I already mentioned it earlier. And in this place, <laughs> even just recently, we still can get this image. So, tiger can still breathe. Not so many places where tiger can still breathe. This place. And this place still is. And not just uh, breathing, this area also uh, serves as an important connectivity because it's positioned right in the center of the uh, Sumatra Island. So if this area is, is gone, just like a puzzle, like a key puzzle that is gone, the connectivity from the, the, uh, the surrounding landscape, important for tigers, will also be jeopardized. And this is uh, one of the publications that we made. We, we published in Plus One, one of the quite respected journal, freely accessible, you guys can see. Uh, we found that uh, Rimbambali actually is shown in this very dark place. Dark means uh, very good occupancy for tigers. So started from there, we really trying to push uh, a lot of effort to be uh, directed to this area, to protect this area. Because so far, uh, as I mentioned in the uh, previous location, is that uh, despite uh, the important value this area has, uh, the, the management intention that it has, has been very, very low. For example, like just until the past few years, there's only two rangers looking after the area, more than twice the size of Singapore. Two rangers. And not just tigers. This area is you know, very, also very rich in uh, other species, including wildcats. This is the one that we already documented with camera traps. There are five including tigers. There could be two more. We are expecting that we haven't got it so far. Uh, we are now putting up 300 camera units on the ground at the moment. It's probably around 200 already placed. Another 100 to, to place. We have 16. And hopefully we can get more species there. And we also published all these uh, can actually uh, interact to each other. Uh, but they share space. And you can access this also in, in uh, Journal of Geology. And also some uh, publication, some other publication. And uh, this is just one of them that very few people know that oh, really you have that kind of cat, not just a tiger. Even like this smaller cat, actually uh, sometimes it's more difficult to get a picture of that tiger. So I would say some are more rare than tiger. And this those two, by the way, that were climbing up was uh, the cubs. And a beer that uh, I don't know how many of you have uh, seen it here is depicted quite quite closely. <laughs> and wild dog, wild dog that can climb up in a very uh, steep terrain. Running. Since we're using the laptop, put on the first level.
those uh, animals, and actually these are the animals that uh, that look after this forest. Without these animals, the forest cannot grow like that. So for example, uh, without tigers, I, I've seen it myself in many different places, like in the U.S. Without the large predator, the forest cannot grow because all of the seedling will be eaten up by uh, uh, herbivores. Similarly, in, in, in Netherlands, for example, I also see it myself. Uh, so, the, the animal actually plays very important roles in, in keeping up uh, the area as, as a good ecosystem. And I actually have some beautiful pictures of uh, uh, the water, the, the, the waterfall in this area. I'd like to show you. And how important it is, uh, I mean, the, the water supply uh, from this landscape for the local community for fire season, like including uh, the, the hydro power that uh, are developed at mostly at just a small scale for the village level and also like uh, fisheries resorts so most people actually get the protein from the river that, uh, uh, that this forest actually are uh, maintaining Something is <laughs> a project. Projected like. Oh, uh, one of the things that is also very interesting actually is uh, the, the the practice done by the local community uh, managing the river and the fisheries. So this area, we found out that as we studied the tiger, that the local community is so 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 uh, interesting that they actually uh, somebody that we should learn from is that we are teaching. Times. In conservation, we think that we have to teach the local community. We have to make the community aware. In the case here, uh, I learned a lot from, from, from the local community here, how they actually manage the resources. Just an example, along the river called Subaya, inside the Kambali, some of the, uh, uh, the, the river are actually protected from being fish. And uh, unsustainable fishing, like you see, a bomb or electrocution, are totally uh, prohibited by the community here. And uh, they have this uh, tradition that... Okay, why don't I just enjoy it? It's okay, it's really... Yeah, it's okay. So, uh, in this community, they, they have this kind of like small-scale protected area in the river where they actually harvest the fish. And interestingly, they actually use that communally Organize it to make it like a like festival every year or twice a year depending on, on the season and so on. So they harvest the fish, uh, they make a festivity. Oops, I didn't do that. <laughs> uh, and you know they they don't even need to pay what most city people pay. Like the electricity bill is paid by this uh, uh, the, the the revenue generated from this. Uh, uh, from this fish uh, harvesting. Okay, I hope it works. Okay. I think it's a Bluetooth that makes. Okay. Hey. <laughs> See, I told you, it's not too bad, right? So it's worth waiting. So yeah, some of this uh, amazing river is to be found in this area. Uh, like diesel is a generator, or they, some of them actually are uh, kind of like subsidized by this uh, uh, revenue from uh, fishing parts. These are some uh, fishes that are already very rare in many other places. This is the mechanism where they actually auction the fish that they harvested. So the price actually can go very high, and uh, the, the local community can get a good amount of money for like yield activity. Uh, the community here are mostly Muslim, so they also develop the mosque uh, with this kind of fun. And uh, downstream uh, from Riman Valley, there's uh, a river called Kampar. Actually, it's just the mountain sector just goes to Singapore. And there's this phenomenon called uh, Bono. Actually, it's uh, one of the largest uh, river surfing that you can have. If you Google uh, Seven Ghosts Bono, you will find out it's really amazing. 
unfortunately, again, my history come back. So, as the threat of land forests are mostly gone, no, even this kind of threats are also kind of like climate. Even these areas that uh, used to be pretty safe because of the terrain, no people also started to climb up and uh, open up the land. So this, this article illustrated pretty well by saying that it is actually a time if we don't uh, act soon. It might be too late and it's going to explode again in terms of like uh, maybe the forest fires and the uh, uh, haze and so on. And yeah, I, I took this picture myself also from Kandar when, when, when the, the haze was really bad for several weeks or months. I had my flight cancelled for so many times. I used to fly and then to plan to land, went back to Jakarta. So many stories happened uh, because of the fires, and so many, uh, uh, so much uh, cost that we have to pay for them. And again, like uh, talking about the, the demand that are driving uh, this deforestation, it's just going to, to increase. If you see the, the population, the global population is still increasing, although the, the rate are uh, believed to have slowed down, but still, like we, we can expect that around. <coughs> Nearly 10 billion people will be on the planet, and all of them will get a lot of resources that some only can be again planted in this kind of area. So, how do we contribute? How can, can people in the city contribute? How can you contribute? There are there are several ways. Well, if you have your time, you want to take a break, try. You can also uh, join our protection team. Welcome, or join our research doing some monitoring work. Also very welcome. But uh, conservation actually uh, has a lot of uh, phases and a lot of program that to be integrated. So everyone has their own role. Private sectors, local community, even city people has their own role to play. And the key is collaboration, just like what happened here I think is a perfect example uh, where collaboration can hopefully uh, help restore the rainforest. So in the local community also, oftentimes I cannot talk to tigers just like uh, for the local community to save tigers. We have to speak differently. We have to convince them with what they need in daily life. So water is something that uh, is so apparent. Talking about tiger conservation, talking about wildlife conservation, is also talking about their life. And we also give this opportunity, if you like to join, uh, there is a, a group that we collaborate with called Bicycle Expedition, organizing uh, expedition every year to Rimang Bali. It's about, uh, for about two weeks, you can spend some time there. And also, again, uh, here, this is a team uh, from the uh, We are here to reach out to the, the, the public, to engage the public, to give public opportunity to contribute, not just to make their awareness, but more importantly also for ourselves to learn and contribute even better. With that, I'm going to uh, end my presentation. Thank you.